Push it till it beeps. I do. Oh, okay. I guess it's already recording. Okay. Uh, last class, we started projectile motion with friction. Woohoo! So, we're finally dealing with what do we do with air friction? Because it is real, it is there. You have to wait till you're a junior or senior before you get to finally deal with it. And even now, we're approximating it. So let me remind you of what we did in the last class. We started with, as with everything with this class, we start with Newton's second law. And let me write it out. In the sum of the forces, if you've got a baseball, flying through the air, where's the air friction? Well, air friction opposes motion. And what are the forces on this ball? Well, you're going to have gravity on this ball, pulling it down. And you're going to have air friction. Which way does air friction go? Well, it does opposite of this. Whatever that is, that's where air friction goes. So this is the force of air friction back here. So you've got force of gravity, and force of air friction, these are the two forces on the ball, and that's going to cause it to slow down whichever way it's going. Whether it's going up or down or sideways or whatever, air friction is going to slow it down opposite. But gravity is going to consistently pull it down. So how do we write this out? We have to include those forces in the sum of our forces. So for the force of gravity, that's easy. We just do 0, 0, mg with a negative sign, and that takes care of gravity. That one's easy. The friction's a little bit trickier, so what we're going to do is we're going to throw m gamma, and gamma is related to that coefficient, coefficient of friction, and, and, uh, and we put an m in front of there to make our math easier, but this is just a constant anyway, so why not put an m here? Just pull an m out of the constant so that uh, we, have, we can make our math easier. And then what we'll do is we'll multiply this times x dot, y dot, and z dot, so that whatever speed it has in the x, y, or z direction, the, this, that speed is multiplied by this constant, and that'll give you a friction that slows it down. So if there is no speed in, say, the y direction, then there will be no friction in that direction. But if you have an x speed or a z speed, then you will have friction in that direction. And so this negative sign is going to slow it down. This negative sign uh, let me just try this again. This negative sign is going to make it opposite of whatever the speed is. This negative sign is just going to be negative z straight down every time. And, and then, of course, we have to finish this out according to Newton's second law. This is going to be equal to mr double dot. And that's a vector. And so since that's a vector, let me get rid of that and make that x double dot, y double dot, and z double dot. And so now we see that we have three differential equations that we can solve. And we love the solving differential equations. And the last class, I know this is hard to remember, I had to call uh, Brianna just to remember myself. Where did we leave off? Uh, we did x and y in our last class, and we didn't do z. We left off with z. So let me just remind you what x and y are, and then we'll do z. Okay, so the um, position as a function of time is equal to v naught x over gamma times 1 minus e to the negative gamma t plus x naught. And of course, that's x as a function of time. That's the equation of motion in the x direction. But remember, we've got to do this three times. Once for the x, once for the y, and once for the z. So here's the x. The y, because you see the equation is exactly the same for the x and the y, it's going to be the exact same result. And in case you're wondering why I'm talking louder and louder, it's because I'm in a steel building, and it's raining outside with a thunderstorm, and it's really loud in here. So I hope the microphone is picking up my voice and not the rain, because in my ears it sounds really loud. But anyway, I'll keep going. Uh, y of t is equal to v naught y over gamma times 1 minus e to the minus gamma t plus y naught. <coughs> OK, so now we've got two out of the three equations of motion found 
position as a function of time, let's get z of t. What is z of t? So let's find that one now. So we're just going to take this bottom equation here that we get right out of Newton's second law, and we're going to solve it. And we're going to have to do, we're gonna have to, it's a second order ordinary differential equation. Now, let me remind you. This is what makes it ordinary. Well, let me write it out and you'll see. This is uh, minus mg minus m gamma z dot equals m z double dot. What makes it ordinary? Well, the fact that it's linear. It's not actually a linear equation in that it's going to give you a line. It's linear in that none of these are squared. There's a z double dot, a, c, a z single dot, and then there's no z. I mean, we could actually have a z here and it would still be linear, but there's a constant here. But the point is, there's no sine functions in here. This isn't squared, that's not squared, and that brings me to an important point. That's not squared. Why isn't it squared? It should be squared. You remember, uh, if you you remember that we, we talked about air friction a few chapters ago, and the air friction equation looks something like this. Um, let me see if I can remember it off the top of my head. The force of air friction was equal to V vector times uh, C1 plus C2 V magnitude. So it looks like this. And there's a minus sign in front of this. And where this was a constant that depends on uh, the, the humidity and the pressure and, and the density of the air and all that stuff, and this does too, and of course this only works for spheres. And, and remember when we did all this, this term dominates when it's small and slow. Small meaning smaller than, say, you know, a centimeter, and slower than, you know, say, a snail this piece is gigantic. But if you're moving fast, or it's large, then this term dominates. And notice there's a v times a v, that gives you a v squared. Well, what's a baseball? Well, that's larger than a centimeter, and it's faster than a snail. So this term should be dominating we should be having a square here. Why don't we put a square there? We should put a square there. And the answer is, um, that would make it not linear, and that would make the math really hard. So, we don't. That's it. That's the only reason. I know it's a sad, pathetic reason, but that's it. This equation, when you get rid of that square, well, let me try this again. This equation with the square there is an approximation. This equation here is an approximation. It works pretty good for spheres. You get something weird like a box, throw the equation away. You get something really weird like a bicycle wheel, forget it. No math. Fluid dynamics is a mess. So putting a square there would A, throw away this piece, and B, be an approximation. But we're going to do worse than that. We're going to throw the square away and make it a worse approximation. And then we're going to have to adjust this gamma to make it match closer. And then you say, well, why are we even doing this if we're just going to approximate everything and make it not even match reality? Well, because here's the thing. If you adjust that gamma properly, it does come pretty close to reality. And that's my point. All we do in physics all day long for the rest of your life is describe the real world with the language of math. That's all we do ever. The problem is reality is complicated usually too complicated to match exactly. So all we do is come up with approximate solutions 
that are good enough. And don't get me wrong, we do pretty good with these approximations. We can go to the moon with these approximations. If you've ever tried to hit the moon, it's a trick. But my point is we can do good with these approximations and this is an approximation that's pretty good. Okay, so we're moving on with that approximation. I think we've already talked about all that, but it makes me feel happy to say it again. So here we go. <coughs> Notice step one in solving this differential equation. There's an M in every single piece. Bam, 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 gone. Okay, now do you see why we put an M in front of that gamma? We just pulled an M out of the gamma and I told you is to make the math easy. Now you see why, okay? So now the M goes away everywhere and we have a slightly easier differential equation. So we have this differential equation now. We're going to have minus g minus gamma z dot equals z double dot. But I'm going to get rid of the z double dot and because we want to solve, we want to have a differential equation that we, is easy to think through, I'm going to change it to d z dot over dt because that's what z double dot means. And then as long as I'm at it, I'm just going to get rid of this. And I'm going to do it over here. And I'm going to change this to a v in the z direction. v in the z direction. Now we have a first order differential equation that we can solve. And so let's do that. So I'm going to send my dt up here. But now I have to get all my v's on the same side. And I can't move just this piece without bringing that with it. So I'm going to take the whole thing here and take it downstairs so that I have a dt upstairs and a dvz over here with the, this whole thing downstairs. Minus g minus gamma vz. And now we're going to slap integral on both sides. And we have to put limits on here. So what are our limits? The limits for time are, well, from whenever you start, we'll start when we throw it, to some random generic time down the road. And then we'll do the same thing for velocity. It starts out at uh, initial speed in the z direction. If it started at zero, it wouldn't go anywhere, so that's not a very good baseball hit. So we got to give it some initial speed. But it's going to change as we go because there's friction and because there's gravity. So both of these things are going to slow down. So we're going to change it. We're going to have up here some generic vz down the road. And that'll be a function of time over here. So uh, the left hand side is easy. That just gives you t. I can handle that integral. Now this side, however, is a little bit messy because uh, what do you do with that? And the answer is u substitution. Okay, so let me write u substitution in a different color over here. I'll use green. So we're going to do u substitution and we're going to substitute the whole denominator. So we're going to we're going to let u equal negative g minus gamma vz. Now, did we have to bring the negative with it? No. We could have left the negative over here. Tomato, tomato. Who cares? I brought it with it. You can do it either way. But we're going with it this way. So uh, the next step when you do u substitution, and I know y'all have all had all the calculus classes and you know how to do u substitution, but a lot of people forget. So I'm just reminding you how to do this. So here we go. The next step is to do du, d, take derivative of u with respect to whatever you're integrating over. So we have to, we have to take derivative with respect to vz. So when we take derivative of all this, we're going to get a negative gamma out of that. And when we do that, we can do a little bit of algebra and rearrange this for dv. And so we're going to get dvz is equal to du over negative gamma. Now the next step is to deal with our limits to find out what v naught z, the lower limit, what does that become in our u space? Don't you love mathematician language? Anyway, in the u space, we have to, this has a new limit. It's no longer initial speed, it's some, some, something weird. So what we have to do to find that is we have to plug that in up here. So our old limit becomes this new limit of minus g minus gamma v naught z. And our upper limit 
becomes minus g minus gamma vz. <coughs> okay, so now let's plug everything in here and let's write this out. Uh, and I guess I, so uh, my integral now becomes, uh, my lower limit becomes all this stuff here, minus g minus uh, gamma v naught z, and my upper limit becomes this stuff here, minus g minus gamma vz, and then instead of dvz, I'm going to put du over gamma, <coughs> negative gamma, and instead of all this, I'm going to put a u, because that is u, okay? So now we just have this simple integration here, 1 over u du, with a constant that we can pull right out front. Ha ha, I can handle that integral. That's an easy one. That's just natural log, right? So this is just going to be t, the left-hand side stays the same, is equal to 1 over negative gamma. That's my constant. I built out, pulled it out right out front. And now I'm going to have a natural log. Now remember how this works. You're going to have a natural log of the upper limit minus the natural log of the lower limit. There are the log rules. A log, well, I'll write it out. The natural log of A minus the natural log of B is equal to the natural log of A divided by B. It's just a log rule. If you don't believe me, look it up in some calculus book. Google it, whatever floats your boat. But that's what we're going to do here. We've got the natural log of this minus natural log of this, and so I'm just going to turn it into a quotient. Okay? So, this ends up giving me natural log of upper limit divided by lower limit. Negative g minus gamma vz divided by negative g minus gamma v naught z. Okay? Excellent. We've done the integration. We've solved our first differential equation. Almost. The piece that's missing is we weren't looking for t as a function of v. We were looking for v as a function of t. So we have some algebra to do now. This is the way differential equations always go. They make you do a ton of work like this. So we now have to do algebra and solve this for vz. Well, how do we do that? Well, step one, I'm going to throw this gamma upstairs in front of the t. And then I'm going to take e of both sides. That's how you get rid of natural log, right? So. Uh, what this is going to do is this is going to be, uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm going to have a negative gamma t on the left side is equal to natural log of all this stuff, negative g minus gamma vz over negative g minus gamma v naught z. And now I'll take e to this and e to this. And e to the power of natural log is just this. That stuff goes, this, the natural log just disappears. And you're left with an E on this side. So what that gives me is E to the negative gamma T is equal to just this stuff. And that's going to be a negative G minus gamma VZ divided by negative G minus gamma V naught Z. <coughs> and now we can solve for that. And this is where I wish we were back in school, where we had 20 feet of whiteboard space, but instead I have 6 feet of whiteboard space. So I'm going to have to erase this board, and you have been careful to take notes, so you have it all on your paper. And I have it on my paper too, so we'll leave this corner here and we'll pick up back in the upper left-hand corner. Okay, so here comes some whiteboard magic.
okay? Now, we want to solve this equation for Vz here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the denominator, multiply it up here, and add the g over. So we're going to have negative gamma Vz is equal to minus g minus gamma v naught z times e to the negative gamma t plus g. Right. Okay? So now we're going to divide this by a negative gamma. So the gamma is going to go downstairs. It's going to turn these into pluses and turn that into a minus. So we finally have Vz as a function of time is equal to g plus gamma v naught z times e to the negative gamma t plus g, I'm sorry, minus g, the whole shebang divided by gamma. Whew. That's a lot of work. But remember, this is a second order differential equation. We've now solved one differential equation. Second order means you've got to solve two differential equations. So we're only halfway done. Ha! Let's get going. Okay, so now you've got to remember to solve the second part, you have to remember that this is a derivative. What this is, is d uh, z dt is equal to all of that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply my dt across. We've got to get all our z's on the same side. And all our t's on the same side. There's no z's in here. So we'll just write it all out, okay? So, uh, <coughs> On the left side, we're going to have a dz. And on the right side, I'm going to split this up into pieces. We're going to have a g over gamma times e to the minus gamma t. <coughs> uh, no, not yet. g plus gamma v naught z over gamma times e to the minus gamma t minus, with a dt here, minus g over gamma dt. Okay, I hope you see what I did there. When I, when I sent my dt to the other side, I just distributed it between the two pieces so that I end up with a piecewise integration. Okay? So now that we have this, now we're going to slap integral on both sides. Except you've got to slap three of them up there. And uh, this, we have to put limits on here. So z has to go from z initial to some z down the road. Time goes from zero to some time down the road. And this is the same one, zero to... These two have to be the same, because this is a piecewise integral, so be sure to keep those the same. And uh, there we go. Now we just do our integration. The left side is easy. That just becomes z minus z naught. That's an easy integral. This one's a bit tricky. It's not too bad, because all this parentheses is a constant. We can just pull that out front. That's easy. It's this minus gamma t up here. What do we do with that? Well, if you remember, that's another u substitution. So let me write that u substitution up here. We're going to let u equal minus gamma t. That's a pretty easy u substitution. And then we're going to have to do du d what? Well, derivative with respect to whatever you're integrating over. So du dt. And the derivative of this with respect to time is just minus gamma, which then tells me that dt is equal to du 
over minus gamma. And now our limits, zero, turns into, plug in a zero there, you get zero. But t becomes minus gamma t. You see how we had an upper limit of t here? That upper limit, when you plug the time in there, gives you minus gamma t. Okay, so <clears throat> this is going to be integral, uh, let me put that constant out front, g plus gamma v not z over gamma times the integral of 0 to minus gamma t times e to the u du with a minus gamma downstairs. And now as long as we're at this, we'll do this one here too. Now, because this is piecewise, these are two different integrals, so we can just leave this one alone. I'm going to pull my constants out front, minus g over gamma, and 0 to t dt. It doesn't get any easier than that integral. So, we finally get done with all this. And now we can have our answer here. Our answer will be z minus z naught. That comes from the left side. This integral, that one's easy. I'm going to have uh, g plus gamma v naught z over gamma squared, and a negative sign comes in front of that because of this gamma downstairs. And we're left with e to the u. So we're going to have e to the negative gamma t minus e to the zero. So the integral of e to the u is just e to the u. But we have to have this limit minus e to the this limit. Okay? And then lastly, we're going to have this piece here minus g over gamma times t. This is a t minus zero, so we're not even going to write the zero. And don't forget, now this, this is the piece that people always want to forget. Don't forget this. You see this? e to the zero is not zero. e to the zero is one. So don't throw this piece away. That's an important piece. We need that one there. Okay? So uh, we're almost done. The algebra for this differential equation is much easier. Remember, our goal is to get z of t. Well, we're almost there now. See, all we got to do is solve for this. Well, that's easy. Just add your z naught to the other side. And with this gamma here, I mean, sorry, this negative here, we can throw that into the uh, um, parentheses there. So we finally get z, and I'm going to write this down low, <coughs> z of t is equal to uh, g plus gamma v naught z over gamma squared times 1 minus e to the minus gamma t minus g over gamma t plus z naught. Oh! I just broke my microphone. Oh man. Oh well, I just got it. Okay, I think the microphone still works, it just won't clip to my pocket anymore. Uh, okay, so there we go. There's z of t. z is a function of t is now found. Our third and final differential equation to be found is now found. Hey, that's pretty exciting. Let me remind you what we've got here. Remember, we had already, going back to where we started, I wrote them over here, but now I'm going to write them over here, x of t is equal to v naught over, or v naught x over gamma times 1 minus e to the negative gamma t plus x naught and y of t is equal to v naught y over gamma times 1 minus e to the minus gamma t plus y naught. Now if you look at this, you say hey, these equations are pretty similar. They're not identical, but they're similar. So, 
let's group them together. So let me erase some board space here so we can group them together and make it look a little prettier. Now, let me just go ahead and say that all this, these are, uh, when you're actually using these, you probably want to just use these by themselves. But for the sake of vector math, for the sake of conciseness, we want a cleaner way to write this, okay? So let me just show you a cleaner way to write this whole equation. <clears throat> this whole set of equations, actually. Okay, so here's what I want to point out first. All three of these, this piece, this piece, and this piece, indicate position in all three dimensions at once. So instead of writing this, this, and this, I'm just going to write this. R vector of T. And that's a vector that means all three of those. Equals. Now, over here, let me use a different color here. Uh, look, I've got a V naught X over T, or over gamma, times this thing, and a V naught Y over gamma times this thing. Now look inside this piece here. Notice, if I do V naught Z times a gamma divided by a gamma squared, isn't that going to look just like this? Times that same function? And notice this, what's more? So I'm going to group this, this, and this, along with this, all at once into one equation that looks like this. It's going to be 1 over gamma times v naught vector. And that's going to include v naught x, v naught y, and v naught z times 1 minus e to the minus gamma t. Okay? Now, you can look at this and see where we're going here. You see there's two pieces. Uh, well, let me just show you the next piece here. Um, I'll use pink. I haven't used pink yet. There's an x not here, a y not here, and a z not here. We can combine all those as well. So we're going to do that. I'm going to leave some space, and I'm going to do plus R initial. Remember, where R stands for position. So this is a vector. That vector includes all three of those parts. Now, if you'll notice, there's some pieces that were neglected 